when to hustle and grind and when to unwind. I think there's the big assumption that to be successful, you have to work harder than everyone else. You know, you have to be relentless and you have to do it for 10 years to be an overnight success. And whilst there is no doubt that hard work is a key element of success, and uh, for people who aren't working or doing enough, then obviously stepping up their ethic of work is going to help. It's only one of the ingredients of success. And I've certainly seen the downside of hard, hard, hard graft. Um, that might be attrition to your family. That might be attrition to your health. That might be that you know, you're working hard, but on the wrong thing. That might be that you burn out. That might be that you get frustrated and take it out on other people. And that might be longevity. That might be that you get distracted and you, know, you feel like you've been working hard and why aren't you getting the results? And then you go off and try and do something else. So there's a heck of a lot more than just hard work when it comes to being successful. Now, there's this famous adage in business which says, you, know, you need to work on your business as well as in your business. Now, um, I tend to be quite an extreme person and I will flip from, you know, being very strategic and leveraged and not really doing much operational work at all, i.e. hardly any work and semi-retired. And I'll do that for a few months and I'll just uh, get myself, paint myself into a corner of boredom and frustration and I'll take on a new podcast or a new book or a new business or a new partnership. Uh, and then I'll pat, back myself into the other corner where I'm actually working extra hard now. And I kind of like both in their extremes. And I certainly get a kick out of doing a lot. I've had a big start to the year and probably had my busiest January in many years. Last January, I pretty much did nothing. But here's some things that I think you must heed if you want to be successful for the long term. Uh, and that is if you work smart on your business, one to two hours really good work is probably more effective and more leveraged than 10 hours chasing your tail or like a dog humping a tree. And I'll give you some little tips of things that really work for me to get maximum productivity. So I have a driver and some people think that, you know, uh, that's a bit of an opulence for someone who was brought up in Peterborough. But if I drive two hours somewhere myself, OK, I might be able to do a few calls, but you're a bit distracted because you've got to drive. You get there tired. Uh, you know, you get there frustrated maybe because you're stuck in the traffic. Um, and then when you get there to do the thing that you've got to do, the meeting or the talk, you're probably not quite as on form and then you've got to go back and then you're late and then it can sort of have an effect on your next day. So that two hour journey there and back actually has half a day's worth of attrition or more the next day. Now, I have a driver uh, and he takes me around the place. OK, look, if it's 15, 20 minutes, I'll probably drive myself. But, you know, for any journey over that, I have a driver and he's not cheap, but he's really good. And um, I can get a heck of a lot of strategic leveraged work done. And I'll give you some examples. You know, when you just get overwhelmed with emails and there's things you've got to reply to, but you've just, you're just drowning in them. Well, when you're in the car for two hours in the back, you can get them all done and out and you can get the backlog caught up and you know how great that feels. The next thing is, because you're locked away, you can't, my distraction team seems to be to open the fridge. My wife always says this. She says, Rob, you look in that fridge about a hundred times a day. So I'll do a bit of work in my living room at home and I'll get up and I'll go and look in the fridge for a protein bar. And then I go back and look in the fridge for a juice bar. Then I go back and look in the fridge for a drink. And then I go back and look in the, the fridge for another, um, you know, protein bar. And it's just really active procrastination. Now, Natalie has said she get travel sick. Well, I used to, but... Um, if you get something to rest your laptop on so it's up fairly high, you'll probably find that that helps. And also you can do calls. So, you know, you can line up and book in all of your calls in the back of the car. And of course, that's much easier to do in the back than the front because you haven't got to fit around with your phone or anything like that. And you won't get um, travel sick doing any calls. I used to get that. I used to that used to be really a frustrating for me because I'd get travel sick, but I don't anymore. So I've obviously worked that out and I think you can too. So. Um, you can clear out the backlog, which obviously puts you back on the front foot. You can do all your calls. So I'm doing um, half an hour strategic mentoring calls for my Forex Mastermind members. And I've got, what, 71 to do. Now, that would be pretty hard to fit into my day. Um, but I'm actually in uh, Portugal as, as we speak. Uh, and so the driver drove me to the airport. It was two and a half hours. And I think I got about five. Yeah, I think I got four or five. Um, of these coaching calls in. Now that would take me three or four days normally because obviously you've got all the stuff to do in your day. So it's a great leverage of time. Also, when we, when we get stuck in traffic, I don't care. Therefore, there's zero stress. And of course, stress ruins your productivity in the future. So that de-stressing is so worth the money. 
Um, so you get a massive return on it. So it's not an opulence, it's an investment. Um, and it, it makes the journey go really quick. I'm often surprised, two, three hour journey. We're there, I feel like it was only 10 minutes ago. Um, I had two chapters to update for my publisher. And I was thinking, you know what, I've got to read through that. His questions are tricky. He wanted me to go through one because he thought, you know, we, Lee, he was going to put that to his legal department, um, i.e. just to check that there wasn't anything that could be incriminating to the publisher in the future. And rewriting that is quite technical and I had to do some research. And that's the sort of task I would definitely procrastinate on. Uh, and I got it done in a matter of what? It probably took me 40 minutes. Now, um, I was in the hotel on my own because my family didn't travel with me. Um, and so because I'm on my own, I tend to get less distracted by the kids and the family. So then I'm more productive again. And I really do think uh, it's a good thing for you every now and again to be on your own, to travel alone for a little bit. I'm not saying a lot if you've got a family, but, you know, obviously you can work on yourself. You can clear your thoughts. You can do things by your own time, your own space at your own speed. Now, if, if you take the car journey, which is about two and a half hours, and then I got up at about five in the morning because I'm paranoid about missing the flight. So I've got another hour's work done in the morning. Then in the flight, now fl flights are some of the absolute best ways to get deep work done. There is no internet to distract you. You can't get up to the fridge. You can't get interrupted by the kids. You can't get interrupted by the incoming emails, the social media, etc. So I, I am planned a, the remainder of an entire speaker boot camp. And then um, a package that I'm creating did all that on the plane. Um, I went through a marketing plan for a launch of one of our audio books. I went through our entire marketing plan for the year. Stuff that at home for me is quite a, um, I procrastinate on, you know, it is because if there's a task that I think, bloody hell, this is going to take quite a lot of work or thought, because I like to do things quickly, they, they tend to be the tasks I procrastinate on. And in the end, I end up just getting them done because there's a forced deadline upon me. I've also got to rewrite our whole websites and their tasks that I can do while I'm away. So in those two and a half, in those five hours, in the car and on the plane, it, there is no doubt I got the amount of deep work I could, I could get done in a week at home. So when you work on your business, not in your business, you isolate yourself from distractions. You put yourself in environments, in environments that are conducive to work. Also for me, I find plane flights quite boring. So how do I uh, uh, get rid of my boredom? A couple of times when I was doing my work, I was thinking, oh, I could do with the rest here. And then I was resting and we had half an hour to go and I was like, oh man, you're sort of sitting here a bit bored. I'll get more work done to sort of, you know, cure my boredom because I tend to get bored very easily. Same in the cars. So it's absolutely maximum leverage. Now, when I landed, I felt amazing because I'd got a lot of tasks done that were feeling overwhelming to me uh, that I was maybe procrastinating on and delaying. Uh, so that was a massive tick. I got a week's worth of work done. I felt like I, I felt really relaxed, really uh, sort of, you know, good self-worth. And of course, that's carried forward now into my experiences of uh, running the speaker boot camp and being present with the audience and having time to speak to everyone one to one. And giving yourself time is something that a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, influencers and they're saying, hustle, 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 hard, 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 work hard, hard, hard. You've got to work 12 hours a day for 20 years to be a success. And I've actually heard people say that. And I think, no, sometimes you have to slow down a bit, focus on the right tasks, not the hard working tasks. And, and then liberate your time so you can be more present, more connected. So at this speaking boot camp, I could work really, really hard, 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 go through lots of content, or I could work smart, liberate some of my time to be able to connect with each individual, to have one-to-ones with them, to have breakfasts with them, lunches with them, dinners with them, because I'm not rushing, because I've been working on my business, not in my business, and I'm leveraging working in the business to, you know, outsourcers and, and people like that. So I think that, you know, it, the, the periods of time, You've got to work hard, you've got to graft, and you've got to get things done. Periods of time, you've got to slow down, observe. I learn most of the strategies for my marketing, sales, and, and vision of my business, not by working hard. That is a myth. I learn it by talking to people, slowing down, listening to them, not being in a rush, asking them two or three layers down of deep questions, listening to complaints, to feedback and to, uh, uh, you know, positive praise. You can't do that when you're rushed. You know, when you're rushed and people are talking to you and you're like, oh, I just need to get out of here because I've got to go and work because I've got to work hard, hard, hard. And because you're not connected with them in the moment and you miss all this information that's being fed to you. You miss all the information that's being shared on the social media communities that's valuable to you improving your products and services because you're too, too busy to check in. So 
You know, planning on compartmentalizing your diary, leaving space to observe, to watch, to listen. Steve Jobs was famous in his later years. He'd go for a long walk and he'd have meetings while he's going for a long walk with people because of course he's got time to think, time to breathe. And there's very much this culture at the moment, especially sort of the anti-millennial content and a lot of the American hustlers who are big, 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 you know, it's like hustle, 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 but you're gonna burn yourself out. And um, so to summarize then, Working on as much as in your business will give you more leverage than you think. Um, there's a lot of guilt for, in people. They feel like they have to work hard to feel the reward of a day well done. But actually, one great idea, one great plan, one great solution is a day better done than working 10 hours really hard, stretched, thin and stressed and actually getting um, menial rather than meaningful work done. And I know I can get sucked into that phase from time to time. When I'm in busy mode, this is a fine line because I like being busy and I feel like, man, I'm alive and I'm making things happen. And I kind of like that. But then I get to the point where I'm just getting busy for busy sake, just getting work done for work's sake, replying to emails just to get them clear. But what happens when you reply to a lot of emails? You get a load more emails. So sometimes slowing down, winding down, thinking, taking time, taking space, working on, not in, is way more productive than the dog that's humping the tree. If the dog keeps humping the tree harder, it doesn't make the puppy. It just gives the tree a bit of pleasure. And I, I certainly know because of the way I was raised, because of you know my, my parents' culture, that they only knew hard work because they didn't know leverage, they didn't know automation, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have social media, they didn't have systems and processes back in their generation, they're in their 60s and 70s. So the, the, you know, the, the values they instilled upon me really was about hard work and graft and earning your success. Now, of course, in a sport, or in a strength-related discipline, that's true. But it's also, you know, if you th even if you think about sports where you think hard work is the most important, like athletes, even now, you know, perfect practice rather than practice makes perfect. So perfect practice makes perfect, not practice makes perfect. Deliberate, intentional practice makes perfect, which is including the right amount of rest and the right amount of time off and the right amount of strategy. You know, if you look at football now and rugby, a lot of their work is, um, you know, observing the oppo opposition and watching videotapes and, you know, sports psychologists. And this is working on their sport, not just in their sport. So I would say balance working on and in, graft versus craft, you know, like relentless versus creative, busy versus slow, you know, working versus listening. Then you'll have the ideal balance to grow and sustain your business while grow and sustaining your um, livelihood, your health, your wellness, your family time. You know, you really can have um, a, a balanced life, um, even if you're a relentless entrepreneur. Um, and also, what a lot of people do is they go in really hard and then six to 12 months later, they're out just as hard because they're miffed because they've worked so hard and they're like, well, you know, they plant the seed and the next day they go, where's my fucking tree? And they get miffed and, and they get off track. So it's certainly better for your longevity um, you know, to just pace yourself a little bit. Now, I know I probably sound like an old fart here. I just turned 40, you know, a month ago. But I really do believe this to be true. I've been in my industry now 12 or 13 years. Uh, and uh, for me, the best ideas I've ever had are when I've slowed down, I've observed, I've listened, I've discussed with people, I've engaged in my communities. I've got over the guilt of not working hard. Because for many years, I worked hard because I didn't want people to perceive that I wasn't working hard. So I was working hard to show others I was working hard rather than working hard because I thought that working hard was the best thing to do. And I worked really hard because I thought that was my most valuable asset. But then I know when I work too hard, I get short with people. You know, I, my, my health and wellness gets affected. I get a bit stressed and therefore I'm probably not as good in the, you know, in the media as I could be or dealing with my customers, or clients, or community members, family members, staff etc. I can't think about the next 10 years because I'm only thinking about the next 10 minutes. All right, cool. I think I made the point. I hope you find it useful. Um, if you know people who are working really hard, but sort of maybe struggling, or um, you just really want to get the word out there, you know what, um, we can have our balance in our business, whereby we can enjoy it and make money, whereby we can work graft and craft, you know, whereby we can last a long time. Um, you know, there's that famous saying, isn't it, that people underestimate what you can achieve in a short People overestimate what you can achieve in a short time, but underestimate what you can achieve in a lifetime. There you go, second time round, I got it right. Thankfully, it wasn't my own quote that I butchered. 
Um, and that's certainly true. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Please share this if you think anyone else could benefit from it. Hit the share button on your social media or share the podcast, um, you know, wherever you can share content. Thanks a lot.